What's going on, YouTubers? This is Series 6 here, bringing you more Star Citizen content. Today is part two of my combat logistics series. Each video, I'll take a ship or ship variant and break them down with you and explain how the ship boasts in logistics. As always, and with the current information released by CIG, I'll give you an unbiased, in-depth description of the given ship. My overall objective is to give you a better understanding of the ship, regardless of if it's your play style. Now, with all that explained, let us discuss our topic. The Professionals. Last video, we talked about the start of your journey into logistics with the Vulcan, which gives you a taste of repairing, rearming, and refueling. Today, we talk about the Anvil Crucible and the Starfarer series. These ships are pretty straightforward, so let's cover each career path separately. By now, you have a feel for being a logistical pilot, and you have made up your mind and finally figured out what role you want to play. Let's say you have chosen the refueler profession. You can either have the Starfarer or the Gemini variant, which is the military equivalent. The regular Starfarer is less armored, making it more agile, has a lighter array of weapons, carries less fuel to support people with, and has lighter shields compared to the Gemini. But overall, the regular Starfarer can still hold its ground. The Gemini can also place a missile pod on the nose instead of the engine intake if you are going out to unknown sectors. The Gemini comes with both the external nozzle and the missile pack. Since you are a bigger ship, your quantum drive will take you to the corners of the galaxy to answer the call to anyone in need. And you never have to be alone. The Starfarer holds up to five other crewmates at your side to make sure that the task at hand is seen through. The ship will finally have its duties to fulfill in 3.6 once gas clouds and the fuel changes come into play. With the release of gas clouds, the Starfarer will be able to take in the gas with the front nozzle and then refine it and store it for later use. Either in flight or stationary fueling, the Starfarer is a beacon of hope or opportunity. Even ground vehicles can benefit from the Starfarer by getting necessary supplies to the crew and vehicle. In fact, as an added benefit, the external fuel pods can be swapped out and become more cargo pods if you choose so, giving you even more versatility. In fact, even more versatility is running missions to aid other stations or outposts who need fuel. So basically, you become a fuel trader. Overall, the Starfarer was intended to aid a squadron of fighters, roughly a dozen, or a couple of larger ships. Now, what if you chose a repairing profession instead? Well, the Anvil Crucible is the answer, my friend. Say hello to my not-so-little friend, the Flying Toolbox. If you broke it, the Crucible can fix it. The Crucible is your one-stop workshop for heavy repairs. As a plus, you get a garage to enclose around smaller fighters like a Hornet. The Crucible is classified as a large ship, so just like the Starfarer and many other large ships, it can be across the galaxy at an acceptable rate. Once the Crucible has come to your aid, it will tow you into the hangar and gets down and dirty. With the combined effort of the crew doing EVA repairs, drones, and robotic arms, you'll be back up and running in just minutes. The Crucible can also act as a ship evac, well, so to speak. In the event that your smaller fighter is heavily damaged, a Crucible can fly in, tow you into the garage, close up shop, and jump away. The only added expense is increased mass because you're now attached to the ship. For ships of similar size with a Crucible or larger, ditch that garage and just go to town. The Crucible comes with manned turrets to fend off pesky threats attempting to poke at the beast. Interestingly enough, the ship has minimal salvaging capabilities. So this means you can search for ship components and then repair them, and then store them for later or sell them off if you choose to. I'd say the only downside is the ship cannot repair themselves through traditional means. You need further assistance or EVA and do minor repairs. The only thing not mentioned was the repairing of ground vehicles, but if it sits in the garage, then it fits. So one can only speculate having a crew spawn standby for a ground assault. I like to take a step further and even hope to see the crew will repair an outpost that you or your org mates own. 
Well, shoot. I love both these ships. I want both now. Well, then have best of both worlds, my friend. I am absolutely looking forward to these two ships, and here's why. The first thing is not everyone will have the benefit of LTI insurance. Also, they might not have the benefit of having insurance on the cargo or insurance on ship components that were not stocked with the ship. So the Crucible and the Starfarer go hand in hand. In fact, even with insurance, nobody really knows how insurance is going to work. We don't know if we're going to get the ship right away or we have to wait a period of time before we can reclaim the ship. So this will make pilots think twice before just leaving the ship and claiming a new one. This is why logistics is such an important role within Star Citizen. In fact, if this is your first time watching my content, then you should know that I am a diehard combat logistics guy. And even though my personal fleet does not consist of these ships, I might just have to buy them once they are in-game. I honestly hope you are getting something out of my content and I will continue to improve my work. I hope to grow my channel and create even more videos for the community. If the video was overall helpful, feel free to like and share it with your friends. For more weekly content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. But with that being said, I'll see you on the flip side.